So I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, so I usually talk to students, so I'm very glad to uh, be able to kind of reach out to uh, the general audience uh, as well. So I'm an assistant professor uh, at National University of Singapore. And what I want to do uh, through this talk is kind of bring you um, into the lab of, uh, of someone working in the research on wearable devices. So here the key word is really advances. So we're looking at devices that are not currently available out there in the market. You can't buy these devices, uh, but they're kind of what the next generation of devices might look like. Uh, so these are the, what people in the lab are trying to work on. So the very first thing I want to show you is a current device that already exists. The device uh, looks like this. This is a broken device. Uh, this is, of course, a, uh, th this is an Apple Watch. I don't, I'm not advertising for Apple, uh, but, uh, uh, but you know, I, I think everyone knows what this is, so uh, I, I can say that. Uh, and so this is on the wrist of a patient. Uh, this patient uh, is wearing this barcode here. You can tell it's a patient. And what happened with this patient uh, was that he took a fall. He was out biking alone in the mountains, and, uh, and he, his bike hit a rock, and his, uh, his bike flipped over. He hit his head. Fortunately, he was wearing a helmet, uh, but he still was knocked unconscious. Uh, fortunately, his watch was a smart one. Uh, it detected this fall. Uh, and so if you were there, I um, mean, if you could see what happened, he fell, he fell unconscious, and this watch detected the fall and began to uh, give a noise. It gave that noise for about 30 seconds, saying that, uh, you know, we've detected that you've taken a fall. If, uh, if, if you're okay, press stop. If not, we will call the ambulance. And, uh, and so he was unconscious, and so the ambulance was called. His son, who was waiting for him at the end of the trail, uh, received this text message saying, um, you know, your, your dad had just received, uh, a, has had a fall at this location, and we are calling the emergency services. Uh, they uh, were able to find him uh, because of the location sent by his watch uh, within 30 minutes of that call, and they picked him up and brought him to the hospital, where he is uh, now doing okay. Uh, this was about a month ago. And of course, the news uh, caught up to that, and they immediately gave a headline saying, Apple Watch to the rescue. <laughs> uh, and, so, uh, and so this is... Uh, uh, what, you know, other than advertising for the Apple Watch, uh, what the story really illustrates is kind of uh, different things suddenly coming together. Uh, different trends in technology, the fact that we can measure things on you now, the fact that these devices are connected to the internet, and the fact that, you know, on the internet are your loved ones, where we can notify them. Uh, these trends all came together at that moment to save this man's life. And, uh, and, and kind of... Um, in research, we're interested now to kind of generalize that. Like, given these advantages that these devices have, what could the next generation of devices look like? And so what really makes this device special? What makes it kind of work? Uh, I, I, might, uh, I might start by asking, comparing to what current uh, medical technologies do. Current me medical technology is amazing. We can do uh, amazing things today, like look into the middle of your brain with an MRI machine. However, no matter how sophisticated these devices are, uh, they are more or less a snapshot of what your body looks like at that moment in time. It's what your brain looks like right now and not what it looks like, looked like you know, an hour ago or an hour into the future. With a wearable device, kind of for the very first time, I would say, in history, we can begin to see dynamic changes in your body, not just what it looks like at a moment in time, uh, but actually what, is, what it's doing now and, uh, and how it has changed, the history of how that has changed. And by seeing these, these dynamic changes rather than the static picture, we're hoping uh, that these wearable devices will give us a new window into your health and give us kind of new ways to diagnose or treat disease. And to, so that's kind of really abstract. Uh, can, I, can I make it a little bit more solid? Well, here's a picture of uh, it's an MRI scan of someone's mouth. Uh, this is the nose. This is the mouth. And that big, bulgy thing here is your tongue. Your tongue is really big. Right? And so this is an MRI scan. So from here, you can see inside. And that's an incredible picture of what your body looks like. But it doesn't tell you what this person is doing. Uh, this um, person is actually Hello, beatboxing. So if you listen a little carefully, I'm so sorry it's a little bit quiet. He's making these, uh, by moving his mouth in this way, he's making these kind of amazing noises uh, coming out of his mouth. Okay. 
And so that's the kind of picture we want, right? We want to be able to see not just that static picture, but what this person is doing at that time. And so, you know, the kind of noises coming out of our mouth is not the only process in your body that we're interested in. Uh, to, uh, on your body uh, is an amazing number of signals. Uh, so you might say that the human body, in fact, could be thought of as just a tapestry of signals. Right? It's, it's a lot of signals interwoven together. Uh, and there are things like brain waves. As your brain, uh, as, you know, as, as you think and as consciousness happens, uh, there are signals happening in your brain that we can pick up from, from kind of the scalp, from the surface of your skin. Uh, there are things like temperature. Uh, it kind of varies over your whole body, and if the temperature goes too high, of course you have fever. Cardiac activity, as your heart beats, those signals spread across your entire body. Uh, we have blood flow, uh, muscle activity, and even molecular signals, like kind of the content of your body, the little uh, particles that interact and keep your body moving. Things, those we can find in sweat, those we can find in urine, and by kind of analyzing those, we get a better picture of what your body uh, kind of looks like. And so kind of our really general goal in wearable device is to monitor this tapestry of signals. We want to know how that is happening and what we can do. And so in wearable devices today, uh, you know, people are beginning to uh, look like this. Uh, we don't have just, we all kind of today are carrying a smartphone. Uh, and kind of in, further in the future, in fact, maybe the young people uh, out there already start to look like this. We have all these devices around us, right? We have headphones, ECG patches, uh, smart watches, and, and all sorts of things around us. And of course, you know, smart watches, uh, these, uh, which you guys know all about, uh, these are amazing devices that can uh, kind of, uh, there's a little uh, monitor on the back of this device that can actually measure your heart rate and also your, uh, your, 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 uh, the heart beats, so I can, I can tell you how fast your heart is beating at that moment. Uh, and by being able to monitor that over a huge, uh, huge amount of time, uh, you, you know, this can actually capture uh, the fact that your heart is weak or the fact that your heart uh, is going through fibrillation, uh, it, it, those kind of events that you would not be able to capture because you can't just sit in the hospital all day and have those uh, signals measured. Uh, you can also do that more in a more sophisticated way using these medical uh, patches. Uh, this is a company called Zio that makes an ECG patch. ECG stands for electrocardiogram. Uh, it, is, it is a pattern of how your heart is beating. Putting that over the skin like a, like a little plaster, like a piece of tape. Uh, they can actually measure that and send that signal to the phone uh, where the doctor can see what is happening. And uh, in fact, these are, you know, are amazing devices today. Uh, people are working on also silly looking devices, uh, almost devices that could go anywhere in the body. Uh, here is a smart fingernail. Uh, this is a company, uh, this is actually made by L'Oreal. Uh, this little uh, fashionable looking fingernail uh, is actually a UV monitor. So this can actually measure the exposure of, your, uh, exposure of your skin to the sun. By holding your phone over this thing, it will upload that information to your phone. We can see how much sun exposure you have. Uh, are you staying out too much and uh, you know, uh, exposing yourself to the risk of skin cancer? And really, uh, there's even a smart nose. Uh, this is a company called First Response. It looks completely silly, uh, but it is actually an ideal place to put a device if you want to measure respiration, right? If you, if you want to measure the breathing of this person. And so they actually are selling this device to put uh, in the ambulance. So when someone, uh, you know, kind of um, in an emergency context goes to the ambulance, there's limited space in the ambulance to put really complicated big boxes to record what's happening to this patient. So could you just clip kind of a nose thing onto this guy? And, uh, and measure what's going on. And so uh, it makes more sense than it actually looks. And so uh, that's just a quick brief introduction to kind of uh, the current state of wearable devices and what's so interesting about them. For the rest of this talk, I want to cover three topics. Uh, the first is where are wearables going? In the research world, what are we interested in? What are we working on? And uh, what do we think the future might look like? Uh, the second is a view from the research lab. I'm a professor. I actually uh, I teach a lot of the time, but most of the time I'm actually spending time uh, doing research. I'm working on these ideas that, uh, you know, that are nice to think about, but I actually get to work on them. And I have students who actually get to work on them. And so I'll take you, uh, you know, I'll show you um, a little glimpse of what, uh, of what my lab looks like and, and you know, what, is a, uh, what is the role of a university in doing this kind of research. And the third thing I'll talk about is a research project on smart textiles. 
Inside our lab, we've developed a very interesting form of, uh, of a wearable device. And of course, the ultimate wearable is one as clothing, right? It's, a, it's probably, the, it is the oldest wearable technology. It goes back to the dawn of history. And today, uh, we can put um, kind of sensors and interesting uh, ways to make these not just, you know, keep you warm or keep you from becoming visible, uh, they can actually measure things and, and kind of shape the, uh, uh, what's going around you. And, and actually, uh, I brought a sample of this textile uh, with me today. And so I'll cover what this is and what it does. All right? Um, so first, I'll talk about the, uh, the kind of future of wearable devices. Um, so uh, I'll just briefly cover uh, one really huge topic in research today uh, is to make these rigid devices that we have today flexible. What do I mean by that? Well, even a smart watch, I'm not wearing a smart watch, I'm wearing a, a dumb digital watch. Uh, but uh, this, this device is, is wearable, but it's rigid. It's hard, and it, when I press against it, it doesn't feel that good. And so if you want devices that can uh, work with our body for a long time and integrate kind of seamlessly into our body, into our everyday lives, uh, we're going to have to make these devices uh, much more uh, wearable, much more comfortable. And, and maybe the ultimate thing we can compare against is the thing that's on the surface of your body, it's skin, right? Skin is kind of the thing we want to compare against when it comes to a wearable. So the, the idea of this line of research is whether or not we can take uh, a really hard electronic device and make it skin-like like this. Uh, this is done, done by Rogers Group at Northwestern University. And so today in research, uh, we're able to take uh, silicon devices and put them onto a kind of uh, a rubber. Uh, so there's a very, very thin rubber thing around this. And rubber kind of can stretch and feel like skin. And we can actually tattoo them onto your body and still have it work fine uh, after you twist it like this. Of course, uh, that we're, we're not, we haven't perfected this yet. This is not yet something you can buy. Uh, there are obvious things missing here. Um, for any wearable device, the battery is a big problem. There's no battery here, so how does this work? Uh, and so uh, we have to kind of solve the powering problem. Uh, towards that direction, uh, you know, many, many of us have wirelessly powered phones today. We don't have to plug in our phone to make it work. We can just kind of hold it over something. In fact, when you tap into the MRT, there's wireless technology involved there too, right? Actually, the signal can go through your wallet and through your purse and we can measure that signal. So we're integrating these devices with wireless technology so we can get rid of the battery problem and have this kind of work like this. And um, so this is a small, short video by, um, you know, of, of what we, of a kind of a plastic electronic device we can actually wrinkle this, and this is done by uh, a group at University of Tokyo. Uh, we can actually wrinkle this device and still have it work fine. Unlike your watch, we can just fold it like plastic wrap and, uh, and place it on, on your skin, and these devices still work OK. And so this is, uh, this is a really one of the huge trends going on in, in kind of wearable electronics today. Uh, maybe in uh, two, to, two to five years, we'll begin to see these kind of devices on the market, uh, things that go well beyond what kind of a smartwatch looks like. Uh, the next thing that we want to look at is actually using these smartwatches or, or smart devices to measure things more than just physical signals. Uh, most of the things that we look at today, like heart signals, those are electrical signals, or motion, like how many steps have you taken, those are mechanical signals. Uh, we're interested also in kind of a, a chemical signals in your body. Your body uh, runs on a lot of chemistry. It produces interesting things like urea, glucose, lactate, uh, that kind of indicate um, kind of your, states of, uh, your state of being. And by measuring those things, uh, we can uh, maybe gain a better picture of what you look like. Uh, just some obvious examples, uh, we can actually use this to measure uh, how stressed you are. Because as you're stressed, you release uh, certain molecules that actually, uh, get, that actually got, can be detected right there. And so this could be a stress monitor. Uh, another thing we can measure is uh, lactate um, and, and glucose. Those are byproducts of exercise, right? As you exercise, we burn sugar, and those, uh, those, uh, those byproducts are, um, you know, we, we, we turn, transform glucose, and then they, uh, they give off lactate. And so uh, by measuring this, we can actually tell uh, how tired you are. So we can actually uh, have these wearable devices um, 
uh, kind of monitor your sweat and tell you if you're tired, uh, maybe even tell you when you're dehydrated, right, and when, when you're exercising so hard that you don't know when to stop, uh, this kind of device could do that for you. And so today we are trying to build devices that can measure more than these electrical or mechanical signals and actually look into the content of your body. Um, so what makes this so hard is that um, in chemistry, a lot of things uh, run, uh, degrade, right? And so these sensors don't last very long. We can measure like your sugar um, for, for like a week, and then the sensor kind of breaks down. Uh, but maybe in the future, we can have these disposable strips that we can attach onto these electronics. Uh, maybe a watch, and then we'll put this little strip at the bottom, and you can buy a whole box of them, and then we can kind of swap them out and measure as that happens. Another thing that we're working on are kind of these uh, electronic textiles, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but the idea here is to turn kind of the, another ultimate wearable device, which is the clothing, which everyone has on, hopefully, uh, right now, uh, into uh, kind of a, a platform to interact with your body. Uh, and so this is a project by, uh, by Google and Levi. Um, here they've taken uh, this, um, these jeans, this denim, and we've conductive fibers into them. Uh, what are conductive fibers? Uh, they're just like yarn, uh, but they're made of materials that conduct electricity. That could be silver, it could be steel, it could be uh, any, anything that conducts electricity. And so they can, pr they can make threads that are, that are just like feel and wash, like uh, regular fabric, and they can actually weave that through there. And as this conducts electricity, uh, and, and you touch this, that, that kind of influences the way that electricity flows around this. And you can take that information, transform it to a Bluetooth signal, send it to your phone, and control your phone that way, right? And so that, that could be an interesting way to interact. Another thing is that clothing is really, uh, you know, it's really a, a platform that is in intimate contact with your body, right? Clothing is touching, uh, you know, very important um, parts of your body all the time. And so inside this fabric, we could actually weave sensors. We can measure electrical signals. Uh, and of course, as you exercise, uh, clothing gets very sweaty too, right? And so this could maybe wick up the sweat and kind of detect those things. And that would be uh, transformative because uh, then we, you don't even need to buy a wearable device. It's actually built into the clothing itself, right? And so I'll talk a little bit more about our work on kind of this textiles uh, in the last section. 